This video will provide a general introduction to the 1500 and 2000 SSC. Here we see a 2000 SSC fully assembled. Note that when arriving in the crate, the crane will be collapsed from the base, which is on a hinge. The crane should be raised, bolted in place on the base of the crane, and then secured using the pins here to suspend the arm to parallel with the ground. We will go through the anatomy of the machines. Here is the crane base with an adjuster bolt to move the entire crane over left and right, which will allow you to fine tune your gripping distance. <clears throat> we are going from the quick connects on the machine to the power unit, in this case it's electric. This will be connected upon arrival. You can switch a machine on and off using the start and stop button. Prior to your first use, you will need to fill up the hydraulic fluid using this filler breather to an acceptable level. The hydraulic fluid should be 10 weight and the viscosity depending on your ambient temperature. Now we will show you the makeup base with the makeup arm gripping the pipe, the tong dies sitting nicely on the OD of the pipe, as are the tong dies of the jaw. Also note that when grip is achieved, you should have chrome showing on the cylinder ram. Here is the steady rest, which can also be moved down the pipe to where that backup arm is. It is secured using the pin tees and the hairpin. Here is the backup arm, which can travel left and right along the large blue pipe simply by removing these pin tees. The chain here is open, but it will be secured over the OD of the pipe and attached to the cylinder ram, also using a pin tee. Here we see the support for the pipe, which has a wing nut in order to adjust the height to make sure that the pipe and the machine are level. We will now show how to add and remove links. For this task, you need snap ring pliers, some sort of soft metal like the brass peen shown, and a soft blow hammer. The operator should remove the snap ring using the snap ring pliers, use the soft metal to knock out the pin. Once the pin is fully removed, the links can be pulled apart in order to put less or more links per your OD. The chart showing the amount of links per OD can be found in the Scorpion service manual. Once you have the desired amount of links, you replace the pin, replace the snap ring on both sides, and the links are now ready to grip. Each SSC comes with at least one steady rest base and bridge. Here we show how to adjust the bridge to best fit the OD that you are working on. Of course it wants to be as snug and tight as it can be, and the bridge is secured to the base using the pin T, which is the pin with the handle, and secured in place by the hairpin. The SSC model offers a wide range of grip distance or grip spacing variability. Not only can the backup arm move left and right along the large pipe, but the entire crane assembly can slide left and right along the adjuster bolt. This is done using a one and a half inch socket or wrench. Note that if the crane needs to travel all the way to the left, the rails can be removed by removing the bolts and then reinstalled in order to achieve the closest grip possible. Shown here is the Scorpion electric power unit. The machine can be turned on and off simply using the start and stop buttons. Prior, it should of course be filled with enough hydraulic fluid. On the hose end, there will be quick connects to connect into the machine side simply by pushing until you feel a snap, as shown. When the machine is not in use, the hoses can be disconnected and should be attached together so that in case someone accidentally turns on the power unit, the pump will not be burned up as fluid will continue to flow. We will now show how to adjust the system pressure. The system pressure can be read on the small gauge next to the control valve. You can get a reading of the system pressure by bottoming out any cylinder on the machine. Simply. Loosen the hex nut on the relief valve next to the leftmost lever and turn with an Allen wrench the set screw inside. Once you reach your desired pressure, in this case 1000 PSI, you can simply 
tighten the hex nut as shown to lock it in place. You will determine your desired pressure by using the Scorpion torque calculator, which converts torque to pressure and vice versa. The SSC comes with a feature to independently limit the makeup pressure to avoid over torquing joints. First, pull the makeup lever in the makeup direction. Then, rotate the knob to allow more pressure available for makeup. Note, there should be more system pressure than makeup pressure. Here we will increase it to 700 or 800 PSI as predetermined by using our Scorpion calculator. When done, simply lock down the knob so that it does not move accidentally and let go of the lever. We will now show how to use the lifter cylinder which is suspended from the crane. Here, the grip is loose around the pipe and the operator is preparing the makeup breakout cylinder for the makeup operation. Makeup on right-handed threads is when the cylinder ram gets retracted into the body. You can see the, that as the cylinder ram extends, the arm requires some repositioning to be centered on the pipe. This is achieved by adjusting the lifter cylinder hanging from the crane. There is a lever on the control valve that operates this cylinder. We will now perform a makeup. The pipe has been marked with two hashes in order to confirm afterwards that the joint has been rotated. The first step in performing a makeup or breakout is to achieve a grip on the backup arm. Next, the operator will achieve a grip on the makeup arm. Note that if you need to center the arm on the pipe, you can use the lifter cylinder, which is hanging from the crane, in order to elevate or lower the arm. A grip has now been achieved and we know the grip is achieved because there is chrome showing on the ram. If there is no chrome showing, it is possible that you need to remove a link from the chain. The operator will now pull the makeup breakout lever in the makeup direction and you can see the makeup cylinder retracting. You will also see a steady rise in pressure on the makeup gauge. In this case it has reached 500 which is where we limited our makeup pressure, and the pressure will now begin to dump. It will not go above 500 PSI. Note that when operating the machine for makeup or breakout, it may be necessary to return to the grip cylinders and reachieve grip in order to avoid slippage. The operator then cranks into makeup, and again, the pressure is dumping at 500 because that is our preset limit. As you can see, our lines are no longer aligned. We have achieved the makeup. We will now switch to backup. The operator is switching the gauges so as not to get confused. We will now be reading the breakout gauge. Note that the pipe or tool does not need to be rotated. The scorpion cylinder will simply extend instead of retracting. The operator has achieved the grip on the backup arm first and is now achieving a grip on the makeup arm. He will then switch to the makeup breakout lever to achieve the breakout. You will see a reading of pressure in the breakout gauge. Note that it is important to adjust the overhead cylinder that supports the arm. This will give relief to the springs that are inside of the box. The operator should monitor the distance and the pull on that box. The breakout has been performed. The operator is extending the cylinder more, reachieving grip and readjusting the crane cylinder as needed. And the hashes are more in line as the joint has been broken out.